This episode of The Double Tap is brought to you by Brownells, Black Rhino Concealment, Swamp Fox Optics, Matador Arms, and Bowers Group. Put your fingers in chair, ready for the fight with the minds on the target. We're aiming for the mic, welcome to the double tap. When we deliver the facts, it's your questions, talking gun industry tracks. Welcome to Double Tap, episode 365. Your hosts tonight are Jeremy Paz Derek. We've got Aaron Krieger in the house, Nick Lynch with us as well. My name's Sean Heron. We have a special guest tonight. You may recognize him as John Patton from the Gun Collective. We're so glad to be here. We're 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 stoked. Are Super we stoked? stoked. I'm, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm stoking it right now. <laughs> Dude, same. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so aggressively stoked. <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite videos of all time. Like the dangers of being stoked. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah. man, it's like so it's like this professional newscast where they're just talking about kids getting stoked. Mm. They're all wearing suit. It looks like CNN, but they're just talking about kids getting stoked. They're like, it's dangerous. Okay. One, one guy's like, I'm getting stoked right now. <laughs> I, I can't believe you've never seen that. It's one of the greatest I've videos. Probably seen, I mean, there's there's so much nonsense that we send each other. <laughs> it's true. But like, uh, I've probably seen it. And I am the cool. least Fetty anyone. Ah, fucking got him. The got least him. Jeremy is a fed. Oh, the Fed. I, see. I mean, because he's the least likely to be a Fed, he's the most likely to be a Fed. <laughs> I just right? want to point out that I have not changed this, and I used this last time. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect timing. You're still a Fed. <laughs> uh, Boy, I do a lot of fucked up shit then. Right. He, Jeremy's animals. A, the Fed who eventually just became like, a, what do you call it? Like, became the criminal. And now he's got his own feds. Kung Fu. What? Where the student becomes a master. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, fucking crazy references that I don't understand. <laughs> well, you know what you do understand, Sean? Uh, tell me, Aaron. The great deals and quantity and quality of the stuff you can get at Brownells. Hey, did you guys go to the Brownells retail store when we were in Iowa? No. no Have you no, ever I been didn't. there? <laughs> no, I did. Nick did see it was great. I, I, I went the day after the event. Nice. I walked over for the first time. <laughs> for the first <laughs> time? Yeah, I never actually been over there. Like I never wandered over there. Oh, dude, it's actually a pretty cool gun store. Super yeah. nice. Yeah, real nice. They had a uh, calico there, and I almost bought it a couple years ago. It Honestly, was still there. Was it really? I'm so glad I didn't go over there because I would have seen it and I would have literally bought it because this time I drove. I didn't do it last time because I didn't want to fly home with it. I heard I heard those things were terrible. Oh, they're just the worst, apparently. I've never they're shot them. Just the worst. But I want one in a bad way because I don't know why. I, I, no, don't. I, I have dumb old school guns, too. Yeah. I want to get one and then just like shoot it until it breaks. And then I don't know. I, don't, I didn't really have a plan past that. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll just sit. Yeah. Because you're I don't not think, parts for that. I don't think you can buy the Calico online. I mean, on Gunbroker, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if you can get it at brownells.com. I'm actually going to look right now. Because the, the retail store is separate. But if you're actually at the Brownells retail store and you order something off the website, it'll come down in a in a basket on a conveyor system to the front counter from the warehouse, which is actually really cool. You know what I found out? I did not know this, that you can actually like you don't have to buy from those little like kiosk things. You don't have to buy. You're just requesting a product mm -hmm. and, and you buy it at the counter. So like if it's not in the store, you know, they have it. You get it brought out so you can like put hands on it. Yeah, that's pretty. Sm that's pretty smart. That is uh, pretty cool. cool. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, it's super awesome. Um, but yeah, I don't see the Calico on the Brownells website. I don't think it's being made anymore, Sean. Oh, no, it, has, it hasn't been made for like 25 years. Why would it be on their website? <laughs> well, because they have one in the retail store. I was just looking. Yeah, but they carry all the latest and greatest. What are you thinking? That's not I, the latest and greatest. You know what? You're right. What What is the latest and greatest? Uh, they've got the new BRN4. That's a pretty rad thing. Oh, that thing has me really wanting to build a BRN4. It, it, it that's the cool. uh, 416 clone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And for people that don't know, if you go to brownells.com right now and buy the BRN4 or the kit or the parts or whatever, whatever you get, 
uh, if you use coupon code WLS10, it will work for that stuff. But also up until the 12th of July here, I think uh, our coupon code works on most of the firearms at Brownells. So WLS10, brownells.com. And thanks to them for being awesome partners. This is the segment that we call Dear WLS. I was like, uh, I forgot. <laughs> we call Sean has a stroke. <laughs> Dear WLS, where you submit your questions and six to eight business months later, we will answer them. Aaron, why don't you take the first one? Oh, I'll never take mind. It. Don't take okay. the first one. <laughs> Nick, do you Aww. want to take the first one? Oh, okay. I'm ready. The Fish, William Frederick Dempsey George Rufus Sutherland writes dear wls it's been years now that i have championed the cause of fucking firing Aurong, Aurong. <laughs> uh, me along with many other longtime listeners and at least half of the cast and most guests um my monitor just turned off there Perfect. we go uh and at least half uh and most guests will not stand for this dry ear raping by a Wow, by a needle dick, footloose, boot licking Jew. Oh, I think it was chops I, I, of a blind Asian. I think it was footless, not footloose. Uh, what did I say? Oh, footloose. Is that what is that footless. the reference? Yeah, I, he, he he states that I do, but I don't. Mm. Yeah, yeah, hey, you're you're and, like healthier than you've been in ages. Uh, yeah, well, the, the fish doesn't really watch the show that much. I haven't seen him in the in the chat these days. He, he listens. Oh, he yeah. listens. I, I uh, I didn't know what I was getting into reading this. I just want to say, uh, <laughs> well, continue I on. Point out that Jew is spelled J O O. Oh Park yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm discovering all this. I'm like Ron Burgundy. Over here. <laughs> I'm discovering. Everybody <laughs> write hate speech in there. Yeah. Uh, what is it going to take to finally elevate the show to the next level by losing 270 pounds of bad gray beard menace to the gun industry with the many different locations and skills, the he man Arong haters club has, I'm sure we can make the resignation slow and pay painful, slow and painful. Just like when he tries to make a point on the show, you owe us love the fish PS fuck savage the pocket pussy of the SSB in the end times. Wow. Um, okay. Why do you even listen to this show? <laughs> Cause Aaron only talks like six or like 12% of the time. I think, I, I think know. that's this what just like, really bummed me out. <laughs> Dude, I know. What a fucking horrible way to start a show, man. Super <laughs> aggressive. Don't listen. forget that, that he's been talking shit about Aaron for like nine years. At least he knows I mean, my name. Too, but <laughs> I mean, he don't get me wrong. He's been correct for nine years. <laughs> well, oh. I don't agree with that. Uh, Aaron, uh, let me look and see. Uh, Aaron, good driver. He's Great bearded <laughs> menace to see if he hates Aaron right now. <laughs> uh, the fish. I don't know, man. Uh, the last time I looked was was the fish even a cult member? Ooh. If he's not a cult know. member, get wrecked. <laughs> I, just find out. I see him all the time. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. He comes into the shop. Oh, really? Yeah. No wonder you guys are sucking each other off. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy and he are both in the He-Man All Wrong Haters Club. Oh, right yeah. screen, using, <laughs> like, put your head in the fucking center, you weirdos. <laughs> Who? Oh, uh, Jeremy and Nick. Nick. Look, they're uh, they're yeah. like gifted. <laughs> like, I don't know they, what to like, Stroke eye on the fucking. I refuse. Computer. <laughs> I'm, <confused. laughs> I'm like do you not have a camera that can like aim they do aim oh let me aim. try let me Nick is trying to show off the cool guns i get it no, no it won't go any higher sorry <laughs> okay well yeah that started us off on a bad note let's uh let's do something different here okay. nicholas her says in an attempt to not ask another suppressor selection question i want to ask about medical carry now that summer is upon much of the country, our clothing is getting lighter than Savage's loafers. Ooh. How does the crew carry medical in summer warmer weather? On body versus off body, most minimal requirements. I often carry a SWAT T and a compressed gauze along with knowledge. I keep TQs in the truck and range gear along with more extensive equip. 
Love the show. Shoot straight and stop bleeds Jeremy style. That means shoot them until they stop bleeding. Because once because uh, heart, once the heart's no longer pumping, it's a yeah. lot easier. It stops. It stops. Uh, so I used to carry the North American Rescue ankle kit, but then yeah, how'd that work out? It's it's great. I like it. I definitely don't carry that anymore, but. I do keep one in my backpack that I carry with me every day, a full IFAC. Uh, I have one in the truck. I didn't until a few weeks ago and then put one in the truck. Uh, I have full like trauma gear here at the office. I have a trauma kit at home. So like most, mostly that. Now I did, I went to PetSmart today and I had a gun with me, but I did not have medical, which, uh, you know, like it's a, I used to carry it every second of every day. And I think I just became a little bit lax, you know, I, I, I put a tourniquet around my arms and around my legs before I mm-hmm. leave the house every day, just stage them. Yeah. But th- that's for me, <laughs> not anybody else. Like, you know, fuck, <laughs> fuck them kids. Like, right. <laughs> this is my shit. I don't know why you didn't do it. The weird thing is he tightens them like fully. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, That's the one around my neck, but only when I jerk off. <laughs> so so when i was coming back from uh gun con i'm uh jeremy dropped me off in my car in ohio and i'm driving back and this car goes in my lane head-on collision style i fly off the road this car fucking goes crazy drives into the woods basically just like deep into the woods knocking trees over right i slam on my i slam on my brakes Throw it in reverse, jump out of the car, grab my med kit. I'm like, I'm fucking going to be a med hero, right? <laughs> like, are you okay? And he's like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> right? I mean, this dude is Help me, bitch. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, I look up. Okay. I look up because I, I was putting the map into my phone. So I look up and there's a fucking car coming right at me in my lane. I'm like, holy oh, shit. Right. So he's like, yeah, I don't know why I went in your lane. I don't know what happened. I was, I don't know. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Let's just make sure you're okay. So I get him out of the car. I get my med kit ready. The only thing I actually used was my pulsometer to just make sure that he was like, he wasn't going in the shock or anything. That was like all, all my trauma gear. Like that's all I got to use. I was so bummed. <laughs> just put a tourniquet on him for no fucking reason. <laughs> right. 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 So, hold like, still. Hold still. Aaron walks up and uh, with his med kit in his hand and says, are you hurt? And the guy says no. And then he pulls his gun out of his. I shot him. <laughs> so I literally just made that joke, but I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing dude i'm glad you're okay holy shit that's like really scary yeah that was crazy you know it was crazy i was like oh wow that's that's unfortunate for him yeah yeah <laughs> that's was, that's rough yeah poor saturn ion you know they don't make them like that anymore yeah or at all yeah yeah i mean I, you know i can tell the guy who's had problems to begin with when the back left tire was already a donut <laughs> yeah. Dude, the, the goalie on my hockey team was driving with like four donuts the other day <laughs> i have four donuts right now do you really yeah you don't on your car yeah no no i have like normal yeah. size tires no i have donuts on there oh, oh. weird i'm, I'm hey, waiting for the joke. fuel economy oh yeah i guess do you, then your speedometer doesn't work Bet you wish you were muted for that one, too. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say that I do not carry any medical stuff on my person ever. Yeah, you have that. I'm always near the van. Oh, yeah. But you have it in the van, though, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got a whole shitload in the van, but yeah, I I don't carry it on me. Right. Oh, go ahead, Sean. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, I don't listen. I don't to be completely honest. I carry it in my car. I carry it to the range when I'm out and about, you know, every day. I'm this. I don't put it in my pocket. Yeah. It's, I've got too much shit in my pocket. I hate shit in my pocket to begin with. I got car keys. Then that, all right, when I put car keys in my pocket, I've already have, I already have too much stuff in my pockets. So I hate stuff yeah. in my pockets. So yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, and then I, the country boy guns in the chat said he likes the Riker ankle kit for EDC. I don't have experience with that, but I know who Riker is and they're, they're full on on med. Uh, so <laughs> Dennis E says, I don't have rumble on this phone. Please don't hold any guns and get booted. Fair. Hold on. Let me grab a gun. I mean, like I'm going to be holding a gun in a few minutes. So like, uh, well, 
I guess that's a good time as any to talk about Medical Gear Outfitters. Um, you can go to medicalgearoutfitters.com and get all the stuff we talked about, all the different ankle carries, the IFACs, the full trauma kits, all of that. And uh, use code we like shooting to save 11% off. Fun nerd. Uh, that's all I have in my van is Medical Gear Outfitters. Yeah, uh, the civilian medical kit, in fact. I have that and uh, the Overland trauma kit. You don't oh, even have like sure. seats or anything in there? Nope, no seats, nope. just med kits. He sits on the med kit. Nice. Yeah, I sit on a single med kit, so it's like I have to reach up <laughs> the steering wheel and do this. And the steering wheel is a med kit as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Uh, Jeremy, Engine, no, med kits. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the, the van doesn't move, and it's not really a van. It's just cardboard boxes. <laughs> When the airbag goes off, it's just fucking medical shit hitting me in the face. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Turn it to the airbags. That well, you still hurt. If it was adrenaline syringes, it would be fairly effective. That's fair. Fairly. Double edged sword there. Uh, are we at? Uh, I Richard. Don't know. Yeah. Richard Nearmouth 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 Is Jeremy no. talking backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Did someone just play Led Zeppelin's record backwards? I don't I don't know what he wants. <laughs> anyway. oh, the fish is here. Oh hey! We just read your question. That wasn't really a question. <laughs> okay. okay, Jeremy, go ahead. Uh, dicks in your mouth. Uh, interesting in your interesting in your experience. I don't think he meant interesting. Jibon. Interesting in your experience with BDC prism reticles such as PASLX One X ACSS Cyclops or Swamp Fox Raider BRC on a tactical shotgun. Which reticle is best in real application? I.e., buckshot with. Donut of death slugs with BDC holdovers. PA lists estimated slug holds for their reticles, but Swamp Fox doesn't seem to list this. Nobody back with Swamp Fox regarding reticle measurements, dot spacing. Any experience with this use on a shotgun, or is the cast experience just more along the generic lines of suck starting? Thanks. Uh, let's see. Has anyone used any of these on a shotgun? No, because it's fucking stupid. There's no reason. You do not need a BDC reticle with a freaking a buckshot round. Like, what are you shooting at that you need BDC reticles out of a... Did he say home defense? or He, he specifically mentioned slugs. Yeah, okay, so slugs, again, you do not need a BDC reticle. You're not shooting that far. Well, You're it won't work. At- their, their slugs in general are not accurate enough unless you're shooting out of a rifled bore and then it, you need a scope. But like this is a band aid on an axe wound. Like slugs in general are just not that damn accurate. Learn how to shoot with bead sights. Be a man. I think uh, the bigger problem here is that you have eye relief issues with a micro prism. So, like, there is relief on at least the ones that I've seen. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. So, Patton's going to love this. If I have a rail on top of a Mossberg 500, I can get I can get a fine optical, an optic on the rail on top just fine. Patton's over there acting like he's got a headache. <laughs> All right. This is my 14-inch uh, SBS. What the fuck is wrong with you? And I have a, uh, this is a Gideon, um, the Gideon one power, uh, prism on here. Um, so basically they sent me this quickly and I was like, I can mount this. Like I, this is a gun I could put an optic on. Why not? Um, so I put it on there and I was like, I'll shoot with it for a little bit and see if it breaks. Like a shotgun should beat the shit out of it. Uh, and the more I, play with it and the more i shoot i i actually i actually kind of like it um it is pretty high i wouldn't mind like a cheek riser or something but uh this one has like the donut with the triangle Mm -hmm. and it has been uh pretty handy so far i i dig it oh my god fan it's also been excellent for uh schwacking roosters so i have two shotguns with red dots on them Mm mm-hmm 
One is the Swamp Fox Optics Liberator 2. I took the mount off and just mounted it right directly to the to the pick rail. So it's super low, right right there on the rail. Uh, I don't know about a prism site. Like they have eye relief. You're going to be playing games trying to get the get the site. But as far as the BDC goes, I was shooting a three gun match a few years ago, and they had slug targets at the end of your shotgun run at a hundred yards for just an ipsic size target, and everyone was hitting them. So like we were shooting, yeah, it was a hundred yards ipsic size target. They were they were doing all right. But yeah, prism for me, no. I mean, again, you're acting like it's not. You're acting like it's going to be in a different spot than if it's on an AR-15. Like it's not. It's just not. It's going to be about the same distance away from your face as if it's on a rifle. I would have to check. Uh, like if, I feel like if your length of pull is correct, the, the issue, it's going to be yeah. in the same spot. I don't think he's wrong. I think the issue is yeah. height. Because yeah. you figure that receiver is meant to be looked over flat. Like they don't design these guns with the exception of the ones that accept having like a red dot cut in them. They're not set up to have a pick rail and then an optic on top. You need a giant fucking cheek riser to get that right. Otherwise, yeah, you're I, at the back of the, the mount, you know, that you I just, agree with. I, I could definitely use a cheek riser, but I, I can get a pretty decent chin weld and a cheek riser is not like a big deal to uh, install on a gun. I don't Wait, disagree. I have a Kraken on mine, actually, now that I think about it, because that's got that real low red dot. Mm. And it's cool. Yeah, I actually, I like shooting the shotgun with the red dot. It, I don't need it. It's not necessary. But, like, I dig it. Yeah. Shotgun, and, you know, there are folks I that uh, I, 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 hunt I, for deer I, and stuff, too. I think where John was losing his shit was the fact that it's a BDC. Like, yeah, having a BDC. dot... Having yeah. a dot on there, yeah, great. Like, actually, I would prefer they made them like almost like a circle. Just g- give me like an open circle, not a dot. That um, used to exist, right? Uh, because again, dots don't look like dots to me, especially if it's a red dot. Uh, prisms are great, but all if you're gonna put it on a shotgun, or you're gonna make one specifically for a shotgun. Like, if somebody actually did this, it'd be really cool. Make a make a proprietary mount that goes right to a Mossberg 500. Uh, so I could just mount a prism optic on my Mossberg, um, and uh, but uh, make the reticle like an open circle because I don't need, you know, I, I need minute of man accuracy. I don't need like pinpoint. You know, if you're using it for, you know, room clearing or you know entry shit, like I don't need to be that exact. I need to be close. I need to be, you know, accurate. But, like, I'm not trying to hit a guy in the eyeball here. I'm trying to hit him in the chest. Unpopular opinion is I want a BDC reticle on my red dot on my shotgun because I would use that outer ring as just, like, place place bad thing in outer ring, and you're going to be good to go. Like, yeah, but you, you could do that, and then you could put it. You know, if you, somebody wanted to do the math, you could literally just put one dot down below for, like, a 100-yard slug hit. You know, like there, a was a, tech. there was a company called Red Ring um that yeah i do too they did shotgun red dots so their red dot was meant to be mounted to a vent rib yeah and they pushed it as a clay target thing and it was fucking atrocious for clay targets so exactly and that fucking their mount it popped off my shotgun every time i shot same yeah it drove me they they're still in business that's shocking on the topic of uh, eye relief on the one power prisms, I can hold this thing out as far as I can reach and I can still see it fine. Okay, cool. So, uh, and I, I think that's fairly common. And some folks in the chat were saying, like, what, one X is pretty generous. Yeah, that's I feel funny. like if you grabbed your shotgun and you need a BDC reticle, you grab the wrong fucking gun. I know, oh, yeah, it's, it's the only gun I had, blah, blah, blah. Fuck, fuck you. You all have a whole bunch of guns. A BDC reticle on a shotgun with any magnification is flat out dumb. I get a red dot on a tactical shotgun. I still think there you should learn how to shoot with a bead sight because the the holdover at like 150 yards with a slug is almost nothing. 
Like if that slug is out cooking out of that shotgun at like 13, 1400 feet per second or more, the holds nothing. It's really not like if you're trying to shoot them in the head, aim at the fucking face. It's that kind of hold. Yeah. So, so like, are you gaining anything? In my opinion, no, because if you don't, the reason I go to this, I want everybody to understand the reason I shy away is because when I'm shooting a shotgun, I want to see everything. And I find that a lot of red dots on a shotgun get in the fucking way. Like I, I have to see the whole playing field and you can't. Totally get that. Um, I also don't like BDCs in general because BDCs basically only work with a 16 inch five, five, six that they're made for. Like anything else is going to be off and different. And then you have to memorize your holds and figure out, okay, each sub tension down is going to be this on this rifle, but it's also this on that rifle. It just drives me nuts. I don't really like them. Um, next time I come to Colorado, we should do like a five to 25, uh, on a shotgun and see if we can hit at a thousand with a slug. <laughs> Jesus. I'm in. <laughs> You're going to have no, to fucking I... mortar that thing in. Oh, dude. <laughs> you probably will. I, like, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of it. even go that far. You, you would have to, you would likely have to use a rifled bore rifle barrel. That's really long or like a goose gun, which I have with a 30 plus inch barrel. Holy shit. I think it's a 36 inch barrel on that gun. That's crazy. We'll figure it out. Yeah, that sounds fun. Uh, I'm totally in on that. John, hey, John, you got the show notes open? I do. You want to take the next one? Jason S. When it comes to battle belts, is it better to have it attached to the inner belt or, or not assuming you wear a normal or CCW belt almost every day? I love the show. Keep it up. What the fuck did that question say? <laughs> so <laughs> I like, don't get it. Like the blue alpha um, battle belt light and they're just their battle belts. I think he's asking, do you want it to attach to the inner belt or not? The double or threw me off. Yeah. Or yeah. Or, or not for me, it makes sense to have the battle belt light that connects to the inner belt that I wear every single day. So like, I wear a blue alpha inner, what is it called? The low profile inner EDC belt every single day. And my battle belt just wraps around that. So when I'm at the range, I like lift my shirt up and hold it up with my teeth and then just put my, my battle belt light around the belt that I'm already wearing. And it just, it just catches onto the Velcro all the way around. That makes I, a lot of sense. I, I hide because no one needs to see that at the range. Uh, but yeah, I do it every single time. And for me, I love that. And the big reason is because it's not like dropping down. It's not going up like wherever my belt line on my pants is. That's where my battle belt stays. So like, I don't know what some of the other attachment mechanisms might be. I think most of them are Velcro, but I freaking love it. And I guess that's a great time to remind you, you can get the Battle Belt Light and the inner EDC belt at BlueAlphaBelts.com, coupon code 24WLS. Is he about uh, asking about the the difference between that and maybe a padded padded belt? Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, I think Blue Alpha sells like a padded belt lining that you can yeah, use. Yeah, they, have, they, have they like call it a grip. belt pad. Yeah, the belt pad that uses like a grippy thing. Either one of those is going to be fine. I prefer the Velcro just because it, it's super convenient. But yeah, that that's my opinion. Depend yeah. your opinion, man. I uh I, I like the the velcro personally. Yeah. If you're gonna be wearing it like on top of a coat or something, uh then, mm -hmm. then it's some sort of padding might grip on better. Yeah. But if you're just wearing it like like you would normally wear a, a gun belt, then uh yeah, I like the Velcro. Yeah. So, uh, Dependable Don asks, yeah. in your opinion, what politicians are the most hate fuckable? Thank you for your time. Well, the, listen, what? Gretchen Whitmer from Michigan obviously is the hottest of them all. Is she, so, though? Yeah. I, ugh, she looks like a witch. You're into witches. I've seen your... your I, dude... Okay, she's actually all, your type. First of all, no, she's not. Yeah, she is ugly as fuck, my dude. No, my no. find one, find one better. Okay, AOC. That's, yeah, well, 
she looks like a donkey. What? What? <laughs> yeah. Now, what? Dude, your description of people. <laughs> Gretchen Whitmer is nasty. How about uh what's what's the uh what's South the Dakota? Texas or whatever. That's Christy Nome that you're Christy Yeah, but that's but would you hate fuck her? No. Exactly. Oh, okay. Well then uh Nancy Pelosi. Yes. Uh, what? <laughs> yes. You guys are weird. <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> AO, AOC is already a dumb whore bartender, so like I'm, let's go for that. Okay. I mean it'd be like Nancy Pelosi would be like having sex with sandpaper. Yeah, I mean Nancy Pelosi's husband. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, Nick. They already they that guy got life in prison for that or some shit. Can you believe that? For when, going to her house? What happened? Uh, Pelosi's husband like called the police, and when they when they answered the door, there was like some dude there wearing his underwear, and he tried he stabbed her husband, and like oh, he, he tried got, to hit her. He had no. a hammer. Yeah, yeah, he had a rubber yeah. hammer. Yeah. Was it and a rubber mallet? A mallet? He yeah. got basically effectively life in prison for that. Ineffectively. Um, but well, it, you, can't, you can't have your gay lover uh, out there on the streets talking to the news. All right. So my list is Nancy Pelosi, Feinstein, Mitch McConnell. Feinstein's dead. <laughs> I don't care, Jeremy. <laughs> Um, what about Bo Jiden? Al Gore. Al Gore. <laughs> you invented the internet, bitch. We'll hear some porn for you. <laughs> and Aaron, you're muted. I'm sure what you're saying is wonderful. I'm so confused by your choices right now, Sean. <laughs> that, that I'm the, the I'm actually I'm, I'm actually offended. I'm offended by your choices. You said hate fuck. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, but it's you having sex with these people. These are so, people you are willing to have sex with. Oh yeah, every every single one of them. <laughs> well, look, I'm if I'm gonna hate, hate, if I'm gonna hate fuck somebody, they're not surviving. So <laughs> I'm taking one for the team. Let's go for gold. Uh, go for gold. <laughs> oh man, Sean, I left you the slugs we're gonna use in the private chat. Oh god, that's. Uh, I hope we get it in the first three shots because I'm not shooting any more of those. Seventeen hundred feet per second. Come on, it'll be fine. It'll be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> the the trick is to bring out a bunch of people. Hey guys, we're all gonna try this together, and then just make them shoot it. One hundred percent, yes. Uh, okay. why, why don't you put it on one of those uh, grip things? Are we done with this question? I think we yeah. are. Can we be uh, done with wait, that one? Wait, wait. I didn't hear Nick's choices. No, okay, that. Nick, go ahead. I'm a conscientious objector. <laughs> okay, I I support that decision. What, what about um, John's choices? John. What did Sean say? Uh, I said Feinstein, Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, Al Gore. Those in reverse order. <laughs> and in order that might surprise you. Are you guys gonna are you guys gonna high five in the middle? Yeah. <laughs> we fit the in devil's Eiffel triangle. Tower. Yeah, we've been Eiffel Tower, Al Gore. <laughs> I invented the Eiffel Who's Tower. Their king now? <laughs> uh, I hate it. Oh, Nick, why don't you take the next one? Okay. <laughs> Page says, Over the few years, your range reviews on weapons were excellent. Some of the few that I actually watched and learned from. Don't know if there are any uh, legalities involved, but would love to see those present again. <laughs> Side note from Canyon City, the range that you presented from looks familiar, Springs area. Again, if legal reasons prevent, that is acceptable. But if nothing else, please start the reviews again. Uh, well, paged, paged. Here's the problem. Paged. Uh, Sean and I couldn't come to terms on my contract for the next season. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asking a sum that I felt was fair. Uh, Sean refused to pay two point five million dollars per video. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, we just we came to a, a uh, an impasse and. Unfortunately, we we just agreed to stop doing the videos. Really, yeah. Sean just got tired of Nick sleeping on his couch. I don't think Nick ever slept. Oh no, that's not true. I guess he did at some point sleep on the on the couch downstairs. I've, yeah, I've, I've slept on that nap. couch as well. But the worst part about that couch, nice was, it couch. was like it was like either leather or pleather. I can't remember which. It wasn't breathable, so you like sweat your balls off. Yeah, all night. yeah. That was the worst part about it. But it was nice. I mean, it's comfortable, but it was just so hot. 
Yeah, Nick well, Nick wanted two point house. <laughs> Nick wanted 2.5 million. I was willing to give him 2.5 cents. And in fact, I cut 300 pennies in half just for this, but it just didn't work out. But if you do want to watch reviews, I started a brand new YouTube channel called Dangerous Freedom. You can find it at youtube.com slash at dangerous freedom. And I think that'll uh I think that'll do exactly what you're looking for. See, look at this guy. Doesn't want to play at the talent, then goes off and starts his own uh starts his own <laughs> channel. See, it's like I'm a genius. <laughs> to be fair, uh, I have been telling him to do that for like four or five years. And yeah. now uh, what Sean has created is one of the best review channels on YouTube right now. Okay. It is very good. Thank you. The, the quality is excellent. You've really uh, clearly been working like, uh, where was it? Pa page D. Patch if you enjoyed those videos, these are like, if you took those and then actually made them professional. <laughs> and they're they're good. I like them. I like them. We work hard on them. Um, Frederick says you have often said that while shooting pistols suppressed to hold the slide closed with your thumb to reduce the sound from port pop, but wouldn't the force of the slide cycling break your thumb? I could see a twenty-two LR pistol not being a problem, but a nine mil or forty-five ARP AARP have a lot more energy, right? No, I can hold a forty-five slide closed. One hundred percent. You'd be surprised how easy that is to do because what, what you're doing is stopping the the momentum. So mm -hmm. like if there is no momentum, it's not gonna hurt. It's the force of your recoil spring coming back, basically. Yeah. So well, the, it's, it's locked. You're keeping it locked, you're preventing it from unlocking. Right. I mean the backwards pressure is basically all you have to defeat is the energy created by the recoil spring. Think of think of it this way: equal and opposite reaction, right? The, the bullets coming out and the recoil coming back, you're not getting extra recoil backwards. Like what you feel when you shoot the gun is essentially what you're stopping with your finger. And if you have a really cool gun, you just flip the safety on and fire it. <laughs> and it holds it closed. That is pretty cool. Uh, but you're, you're not, you're not like fighting any actual recoil in the slide or anything. No. It's not like, if you were holding the gun with your thumb, you're literally just keeping it locked. If it's not allowed to move at all. Now, if your slide if that won't cam, then it won't move. Now, if your slide moves 2.5 inches to the rear and you hold the slide 2.4 inches away from your teeth, that could hurt. Yeah, uh, that, that could hurt. Um, in concealed carry classes, when you're shooting from retention, uh, meaning just like hip shooting, uh, basically draw quick and, and fire from retention. People would always get nervous and like really cant it out to the side. And so one of the things that I would do when demonstrating shooting from retention is like, hey, this is not going to hurt you. Put the gun literally right up against my sternum and fire a shot at the target. And it like doesn't even give you a red mark. So it's like it's, it does make a yeah. weird noise. So like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like if, you, if you were if you were like if you were like toe to toe with somebody and they had a gun and they were trying to shoot you and you wrapped your hand over the slide to like push the gun away from you and they fired, it's not going to like blow your fucking hand off. You're no. actually going to jam the gun, which is you know better for you. Um, and uh, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't hurt. Like I've actually done that. Like grab one hand over the slide, pull the trigger just to show like, look, look, you can just hold this fucker closed. Yeah. It's you can just do it. Yeah. Right. People are freaked out. Do it with a revolver. Uh, just make sure you wrap around the cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you burnt your hand, Sean? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You should try that with a 500. Uh, I'll never forget. Please don't. It was, Please don't. I'll never forget. This was a, this was a, a learning experience for me. Uh, we were shooting Jeremy's Chiappa Rhino. And, he, mm -hmm. and like I had shot a bunch of revolvers. I know how to do it. And so Jeremy's like, move your thumbs. And I was like, I know how to shoot a revolver. He was doing a thumbs forward pistol grip. And nope. then I, I shoot it and burn the fuck out of my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no, 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 no. I was like, Sean, make sure when you hold this, you pull your thumb out of the way. Like use your offside hand to pull your, your, you know, get your shit away from it. You're like, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I like. Not, it's not like he was like, I know what I'm doing. No, the motherfucker was like, oh, yeah, no, that I was like fucking talking to him like a fucking child. And I'm like, I've done it. Like, I know what. It and I'm like, don't. And he's like, no, fuck you, motherfucker. I know what I'm doing. First I was shot. adamant. First shot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I, 
I, I was very humbled at that moment. We all get uh, Yeah. Uh, John, why don't you take the last question? Tyler's. I'm wanting to get into long range precision shooting. I've been looking at some barreled actions from Howa chambered in six, five Creedmoor and some chassis by MDT from Brown Ells. Use that promo code. I'm looking to spend around 1200 to 1400 on the rifle, not including glass. Any recommendations on other options, both barreled actions or complete rifles to look at. Also any recommendations on optics, Looking to spend around 700 or so, but open to bumping that up if needed. Thank you, turds. P.S. Suppressor. So this guy wants us to build him a, verbally build him a precision gun. So I, yeah. I actually have a 6.5 Creedmoor with an MDT chassis from Brownells. And, you got uh, the Howa action, right? Yeah, I got the Howa uh, 1500 yep. action in there. And uh, yeah, so sitting around the corner. And with a uh, Bowers Group Suppressor, there uh, was it there three uh, there was it the they're 300 they're 30 cal can which is the t which one is that the verse 30 verse 30 thank you uh, <laughs> it's, first, like, well, it's the verse 30 t because it's the titanium one okay got it, got mm. it. yes indeed. yeah and i think i have a lucid optic on it yeah um so a decent glass i mean it's not bad i was thinking about building one of those how actions because they got them at brown for like 500 bucks <clears throat> excuse me for six five creed more and then how much is it the md i like literally in your question you answered the question the way that i would answer that question like i would get a how a 1500 action because you're on a budget mm -hmm. of course there's better stuff but uh mdt chassis i've got several of those on different rifles i think they're great i also have the cca sniper stock on there um which is pretty pricey I have the, uh, God, I, I want to say I have that skeletonized grip. I can't remember who makes that one. Um, but you know, you, cause you, it, the MDT chassis doesn't come with a stock or a grip. So you're going to have to find things like that. Yeah. So, easy enough. To consider. Yeah. 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 But I mean, d don't think you're done when you're, when you're, when you just have the, you, that part, you gotta get everything. And then for optic, like, I don't know that you're going to come in there for your optic. Cause even oh. like a swamp Fox optic is going to be, um, five 500 plus for the warhawk five to 25 you could also look at the patriot which is decent not my favorite but decent and the kentucky long which is what i shoot prairie dogs with but the warhawk is is probably the one that i would want uh but yeah i mean dude you you kind of have the right idea for at least for a budget six five creed more that i would do uh burris makes an optic that is it's called the match pro ed five to 30 by 56 uh i was surprised at how good it is for the money like legit surprised and msrp is 750. i have an old burris that i really like it's an 8 to 32 power but it's like a late 90s burris yeah, I have a... I knew. I tried it. So we ran them on when we did uh, Arrow versus Daniel Defense bolt guns. That was the optic we ran on both, and it, it's excellent for that price point. Like so, really, really good. And much... I've also got a Howa fifteen hundred in an MBT chassis sitting right over. There. So, My so he, how much is uh so twelve to fourteen hundred on? So how much is the MDT chassis? I'm looking that up right now, actually. Depending, it depends on which one you get. Because, like, I'm looking right now at a couple rifles. Um, uh, so Ooh. there's a there's a Tika T3X TAC A1 65 Creedmoor 24 inch barrel in a chassis. You're looking at like 2250 for a gun chass and chassis. Thousand dollars more than his budget. Yeah, but yeah. that's no that, but he wouldn't have to buy a chassis. How much is the chassis? Uh, they've got the field stock chassis, which I actually really like for two ninety nine. Yeah, or you could get an Oryx for four thirty if you want to go a little bit more. They've got a few affordable options. Oh yeah, like a bunch. Um, yeah, the Oryx is four twenty nine. I just I looked on MDT's website for what fits the Howa mm -hmm. specifically, and the cheapest one is the Oryx. The next one up is the XRS, which is more like a stock chassis hybrid thing. Um, I've got the LSX uh, or LSS XL, I think, on that one. I don't fucking remember. But uh, if it were me and I was trying to go budgety 
you know, in that vein, I would spend more money on the glass than I did on the chassis. I'd go affordable on the chassis, affordable on the bolt, uh, the barreled action, and then spend a boatload of cash on the optic. I would get, if I was on a budget and I wanted long range, I would get Howa 1500 for 499. I would get the MDT field stock chassis, uh, which is less heavy yeah, than their, than their the other chassis. Say again? Do they make that for the Howa though? That's what they I was do. trying to Yeah, MDT field stock chassis system for short action. It's 299. Then, so we're at five, we're at 800. Then you're going to need, uh, yeah, glass and rings. I, I would do Swamp Fox Warhawk 5 to 25 for 500, which is going to put us right at 1300. And then rings are going to be about 100, so 1400 right there. I think that's uh, look at this gun. Isn't that beautiful? Has yeah. anybody has anybody heard anything uh, about the Seekins Precision's uh, Havoc? It's supposed to be really good. I don't know anybody that has one, but I've heard they're good. So this is my gun right here. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice, man. It's yeah, it's weird fun. when I see Aaron's guns and they're cool. See, <laughs> I, I hate, I hate that that handguard isn't longer. Why? I want the bipod as far away from me as possible. You can get an extension though. Yeah, but I want it like damn near to the end of the barrel. I mean, I would, so I know for some of these, you can get a really long handguard, like it might be an option, or you may have to spend more for the chassis. Like I have a, I have a 24 inch barrel uh, AR 5.56 with a, with one of Daz Tactical's 19.3 inch rails. And cause I want the bipod, is, I, I want the bipod away from me. I want it out there. Um, I want it as far away from me as I can get it. It's a trade-off in weight, right? Like if it's just going to be a bench rifle, yeah, I want it as far as possible. If it's if it's heavy, and trust me, this is from a dude that took a 15-pound rifle elk hunting and antelope hunting and every other kind of hunting. It's fucking miserable carrying a 15-pound rifle. God, I'm looking at all these fucking 6.5 Creedmoors on my distributor's website, and I'm just going through the list starting at like the highest price to the lowest. And I want to buy like 10 different fucking rifles just to just to see it's sad see what just shoot them for accuracy i would bet money that most of them are not that great I, hootie who does a lot of that actually <laughs> oh you know what uh jay jay Weth says why not just buy the solace with wls 10 which is 1587 or is building cheaper than buy that's not a bad point but that, uh, we, had, we had really good results with the Solus uh, in, I think it was in six Creed. And you did uh, you did two a couple of videos that comparing it a, ser a series of three. So it was in individual reviews of that and the Daniel Defense, and then they went head to head at longer range, and both both shoot like pretty damn good. The Arrow ended up winning that battle because it's more affordable for similar performance. Yeah, I want to. All right, there's there's a bunch of good options, and I think you're on the right track personally. Oh, here we go, Barrett MRAD, 300 <laughs> PRC. <Shut up>. Okay, <laughs> that rifle right there is the first one that I ever shot a mile with. <laughs> Barrett MRAD and 300 PRC. Have you seen the Maradler? The Maradler? No, yeah, the Maradler. It's the M2 Rad <laughs> ELR version. It's in 416 Barrett. Oh God. So I called it the Maradler. Love it. And uh, it's just a giant MRAD. That's a great rifle, but good God, they're expensive. Oh, yeah. Like it, the, uh, the, rifle, 60, the rifle map is 6,500. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of money. And the one that I shot had a optic that was about 6,000 too. I think it was a Leica. I throw a fucking, yeah, March on there. <laughs> it was Kleckner's rifle. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah. It, it was super awesome, but yeah, I still need to shoot my rifle a mile. I just haven't, I need to figure out a place to go do that. There's a spot here in Pennsylvania. I was going to say there's a range a couple hours from me. Well, it's like five hours. If, if you get lost right in Thunder Valley <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or uh, seven hours to leave, if you get stuck in the mud, 
<laughs> uh, by the way, you can get that Swamp Fox Warhawk at Brownells for five forty five, and you can use coupon code WLS ten while you're there. Uh, in Deer WLS, every every week we pick a winner and they get a prize pack put together by Krista. Uh, the winner this week is Nicholas Her. And so congrats, email automated at we like shooting.com. And for the rest of you that would like to submit your questions, because I know that you do, go to we like shooting.com slash dashboard and click on Deer WLS. Uh, the prize packs are awesome, by the way. Can I say, I don't know how well it's going to shoot, but the Springfield Waypoint looks badass. Looks like every other bolt action out there. Right? I don't know, man. I think they did a great job on the fucking stocks and everything. You're a but you're a spring uh Springfield fan. No, I no, I just I I'm looking, I'm looking at all these fucking rifles and some of these waypoints just look cool as fuck. I'm I'm looking right now. Hold on, I'll pull it so up. Just, so it's just looks that you're concerned. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm just yeah, purely aesthetics. Okay. Yeah, purely aesthetics. Oh, this looks I have a savage impulse that looks out exactly like these. Yeah, I think I think that's fucking sexy as hell. It just looks like a normal like. It looks like every other rifle that I have with stock. I have no rifles that look like that. Really? Yeah. Sucks to be you. Sucks yeah. to suck. Yeah. Sounds like a skill issue. <laughs> <laughs> lol, lol, lol. All right. Uh, congrats, congrats to Nicholas. Uh, pick one, Sean. Yeah, let's do uh, Matador Arms. Yeah, Matador fucking arms, bro. They were at GunCon. I've actually seen several people say that their favorite thing at GunCon was the Mat Matador Arms stuff. I'm Ooh. so excited about their new rail. Yeah, the the their extended rail. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I can't wait for that to come. It's like any day, I think. Yeah, that that's I'm, gonna be coming out. I heard testicle. But yeah, like multiple people have said that is literally their favorite thing that they saw at GunCon, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, Croak uh, watching over on X said Matt stuff was slick for sure. Um, they just have a lot of stuff and they're just such good freaking people. Like some of my favorite people in the universe, actually. Uh, Nick, you're mm -hmm. holding Matt 9 in your hand right I am. I really, I really like the Matt 9. It's a lot of fun. I do too. Let's Next show, you're going to see my Matt 9. It's going to be, you're going to love it. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know who makes this. I like it. It's like a Navajo thing. Somebody uh just handed it to me today. Nice. Sure, it was, it's, it's like a, a Indian blanket. He's gonna get fucking smallpox or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, man, bitch. <laughs> no, uh, somebody handed it to me today. I'm not sure who made it. Um, it's kind of slickery, and it doesn't like to stay adjusted. But slickery. slickery. It sounds racist somehow. <laughs> it's Only made from licorice. Yeah. Um, Slickery is in a movie. I just don't remember what one. Is it? Yeah. Was it uh, the one with the Nazis on the other side of the moon? I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen uh, that movie. That's how I know for sure that it's not. Are you sure? I Savage talks about that movie all the time with the Nazis on the moon. Yeah, I don't watch. Savage anything. wishes he was a Nazi on the moon. Yeah, I don't watch anything Savage talks about. But yeah, uh, I like the Mat Nine a lot. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a really cool gun. Yeah, it really if you is. Get the chance, you should shoot one. Iron Sky. If you get the chance, you should buy. I mean, I think the upper is like under five hundred bucks, and our coupon code is fifteen percent off at MatadorArms.com. WLS. That's what I meant to say. Buy one. Yeah, go buy one. They're they are cool. Um, I was watching a bunch of gun con content today, and I think I saw three separate videos that called out Matador Arms as being their favorite stuff, or at least very cool. So go check them out. They are life. Oh, yeah. Croak said Little Birdie says A3 is making a bullpup kit for the Mat 9. That is true. I've seen pics. It's dope. Uh, Aaron, it's time for your news. You know, I would do the news tonight, Sean, but we have we have John here, and he could do sixty second news for us. <laughs> okay. Wow, way to put it, <laughs> way to put pressure on it. Hey, did you do uh, the TGC news today? Uh, it's it airs tomorrow. 
Oh yeah, tomorrow. Oh, do you not want to do it then? I don't want to. Ruin yeah, I can. It. I can do it. There's only two things here. It'll be ten seconds. <laughs> well, I, I I figured if you want to do your own thing, you could do your. Ten seconds. God knows. Meprolite. Uh, they Meprolite Optics released two things you're not gonna buy. Smith and Wesson added 45 Colt to the gun nobody really wanted. <laughs> so, I watched that fucking video on the Meprolite. I did not stop. I, I, I don't even remember seeing them at GunCon, but like it was so busy. They were there. I saw the video. But they were on the backside, uh, like the far end of the building opposite the stage. Meprolite. Yeah, I saw them there. They, I, cause Jeremy walked by and like, I bet they're selling a lot of goosenecks now. <laughs> I bet, I bet they are, but they, they, it's the M22 red dot and the MMX3 magnifier. I don't, really dude i love them. i love my metro lights yeah like i've got a couple red dots that are cool but this one specifically looks pretty awesome yeah i i really like their red dots i'm not a fan of magnifiers in general like and their stuff's affordable that's what's really like to me more affordable options out there that's a good thing yeah you know that's a yeah. really good thing i've got the smart site it's like a, it looks like kind of like a trigicon um, or I'm sorry, an EOTech, but it's got like all kinds of data in it. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't found a good use for it yet. Like I'm like, I don't on a, on a EOTech style holographic site. I don't need all this information. Like what the fuck am I going to do with all this? But it is really cool overall. Yes. As far as Smith and Wesson goes, adding 45 Colt to the 1854, um, I I have handled one of those guns. Uh, I went to Mad Pig Customs up in Connecticut and got got my hands on a couple of their those Smith and Wessons, and they don't feel bad. Like nothing about them feels like cheap or whatever. So it's probably a decent gun. I think forty five Colt is a dumb cartridge these days. Like uh, so, at the same time this week, Marlin released their eight. What is it? Uh, Eighteen ninety four Trapper. Yeah, 44 Magnum. So like you have these two choices. Now the Marlin is more expensive at like 15, 1600 bucks. So it's a little bit more expensive. But if I was picking between those two, I would always pick 44 Mag over 45 Colt. I shut, just would. You shut your whore mouth. L listen here. Listen here. At least my pocket stayed attached to my shirt. <laughs> it's a work shirt. <laughs> what, what's, what are you doing with your pocket that it ripped off? Uh, I'm trying to think. I think I got it hooked on a tree branch when I was out in the woods with a chainsaw. I was doing man stuff, right? <laughs> you know, what, yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> these these freaking. I was doing farm things. These Smith and Wesson lever actions look really sexy to me. They did that limited edition one that they did with the the fancy wood and all that was really really nice. It was just way too much damn money. Yeah. Jeremy, 45 Colt versus other things. What do you think? Uh, depends on what you're doing. Uh, 44 Magnum is a much, much more powerful cartridge. It would be it would be only fair to compare 45 Colt and 44 Special. Um, comparing a 45 Colt to a 44 Magnum is comparing two cartridges that are a hundred years apart in development. So you would actually have to compare a 454 Casul and a 44 Magnum. And a 45, yeah, and I wish more companies would make 454 Casual lever guns. The only one I'm aware of is the company that made my 500, this Bighorn Armory. I don't think anybody so, else. So Rossi made one years ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and they were super, but you, but they stopped making them, and the people that have them, <laughs> they know what they got. <laughs> yeah. So good luck. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, 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 I wish that. I wish that more companies had come out with a 454 because the problem is if you did like a 460 um, lever gun, mm -hmm. it's so much longer that now trying to run a 45 Colt into it, even though you can like in a revolver, uh, the, 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 the geometry inside the action doesn't line up. It's like, I have a 45 Colt in the Winchester 94, but a Winchester 94 is a rifle cartridge gun, not a pistol cartridge. It's not a 92 um and it it sticks a lot because it's you're trying to 
take a little bitty short cartridge and stick it into something that's made to, you know, shoot a 30, 30 or a 38, 55 or something like that. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> I wish somebody would make a 454 that you could also run 45 Colts in. And, and then it would be very comparable to a 44 Magnum that you could run a 44 special in. And 454 Casul is reasonably easy to find. Like mag tech makes it like there's a, a bunch of it out there. <laughs> And that shit got some strength on it. Yeah, it, it's only four thousand psi sh lower than four sixty. So they're damn near the same cartridge. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I dig it. So yeah, anyway, uh, I have not shot one of these Smith and Wessons, but I really want to. Yeah, same. It's on my list for damn sure. Which I can't say about a lot of the stuff they put out over the last couple of years. Yeah, the uh, marketing team is a revolving door and they don't know what the hell they're doing these days. Yeah, yeah, kind of weird how that is. Yeah. But yeah, 45 Colt, if you're into that, that that is a thing that now exists. Let me tell you this. Uh, this show right now is filled with a bunch of Bowers Group aficionados. Oh, that was actually a point I was going to make before I went on that other tangent. Oh, go if, ahead. If you're looking for suppressible, a 45 Colt, even out of a rifle, is still subsonic. So if you're talking about a suppressed, quiet uh, golf ball launcher, the 45 Colt is a better option because it is naturally subsonic, where 44 Magnum is not. Right, but most 44 Magnums you can also run special. And if you want to have the option to run both, you run Magnum when you're trying to do that kind of work. And then if you want to go quiet, you get a special down the bore. I get that, but 44 Special is a lot harder to find than 45 Colt, at you're least in my that experience. Is that is 100% true. Uh, P.S. YouTube took down the the stream as is Woo! tradition. Yeah, I blame why, Nick. It, it was Nick, but it doesn't matter. That's, you can put the blame on me. That's why we have done. That's why our live show is basically Rumble these days. Yeah, we stream in a bunch of different places, but uh, the comments and stuff like that, we throw that up from Rumble. WLSLive.com is the website you can go to every week. That'll take you to our Rumble page. Uh, and that is a good thing. But yeah, Bowers Group, suppressed. Jeremy, what suppressor would you use for that 45 Colt? Uh, the suppressor that is actually on my 45 Colt Henry Big Boy X is a, take a guess. Uh, 375. Uh, no. Yeah, it's a 375. It's a, uh, you yeah, get I'm one running, shot. I'm running a 45 bore through a 375 can, yes. Yeah, you get one uh, shot. No, it's uh, the ASP 45. Oh, the asp is such a good can. It is so light because it's a wet can. Um, the I would say the only downside is is with fresh ablative, uh, it is so fucking quiet. But if you're out and you don't replenish that ablative as you're shooting after like 50 rounds, you're like, oh, this is getting noticeably louder, but then you just squirt some back in there and you're fucking done. But yeah, I have one of those on my 45 Colt. Oh, look at that. That's that looks pretty hot. That can is hilariously light. Mm -hmm. I, that can, have, uh, that, I have one of these on the way. Yeah, that, that can is light enough that it actually cycles on my uh, FNX 45 tactical without a booster. No shit. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it weighs like nothing. Mm -hmm. That's that's even even with the ablative in. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's so cool. Five ounces, and, dude. Five 45 ACP, 45 Super, 10 mil, 9 mil. Aaron, you said five ounces? Five Holy ounces. shit. Yeah, it's very light. It is light. And guess what? They're in stock right now. Bowersgroup.com, coupon code WLS. I'm going to go shoot this Wednesday. Try to... Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday's range day. I stopped going on Mondays. It was too much, man. Thank God for that. Yeah, fucking... Go to the range all day, come here, stay here all night. Couldn't take any more. Bonkers. Yeah. All right. That is going to do it for this episode of Double Tap that got us kicked off the internet. <coughs> Before we do anything else, join Gun Owners of America. Uh, they have the goals. Aaron, I'm going to kill you. They have the goals. Uh, what is a convention, I guess? And that is going to be in Knoxville, August 17th and 18th. You have to be a member to get in for free. But I've got a deal for you. Go to gunowners.org slash WLS. You get a discounted membership. You get into goals for free and you help support one of the uh, no nonsense gun rights organizations out there. Tell your friends about this podcast. 
And don't forget to join the cult at theguncult.com. Suicide prevention line is, uh, you could do it from your cell phone. It's, <coughs> excuse me, pound 988. I'll pound some 988. Or 988 pound. It's 988. And then just hit send. Uh, always prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. We're going to see you guys next time. Love you. Bye. Shot we take, we start the conversation. No time to hesitate. The wheel and shooting crew on the mics, we unite. Double tap the show and we.